I am Aishwarya Majmudar and I'm a playback singer and a music producer and I'm so super duper happy that I'm singing in front of you people, talking for the first ever time in my life in front of you people and sharing my story, my journey. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, LDCE for considering me good enough to be here on the stage and sharing my life with you people. You heard tons of great people talk about the chain reaction before me. But of course, I'm here to talk about mine. So let's just begin at the beginning, I guess. A chain reaction for me is the process of turning your dreams into reality. We all are dreamers, aren't we? So now, at least I know, I for sure am a very big one. So during the next couple of minutes, I am going to share with you what it feels like, what and how I changed each of my dream to reality. Let me ask you a question. Why is it that we are scared to dream? What stops us from dreaming? What is it? Really, is it peer pressure? Is it fear of failure? You know, while growing up, I've been asked these questions so many times. Why music? Where will it take you? What will you get out of it? What kind of career can you make out of music? You can't make a living out of music. Beta, do it as a hobby. Dunya mein aapko kahi nahi leke jayega sangeet. I didn't have an answer to those questions then as a kid and today I still don't have a lot of answers. But I believe in one thing. I love what I do and I do it to the best of my abilities. Let me begin, as I said at the beginning. I started when I was three years old and I started taking parts in different kinds of competitions since the age of six. I used to, luckily, win every competition I took part in, from cities to local clubs to state, school competitions, and then eventually, my big win, Voice of India. I gave my music, I gave my musical journey the influx that it needed. Winning a national level competition was one of those biggest dreams coming true. Such a huge channel, being loved by millions of people, being mentored by stalwarts of the industry. It's definitely so much more than what a 14 year old felt at that time, asked for at that time. I am a pampered child. I have doting parents who have really given me everything that I've wanted in my life and I'd like to take that one moment and thank them. They're sitting here with me in the audience and they've created a beautiful human being out of me and they've always taught me to stand up when you fall on my own. I hardly ever attended school so I never got a chance to make many friends. I was either too busy singing or I was too busy singing. <laughs> My career uh, profession, it all took off when I was 10 years old. So no college. So you know, I was just telling these people two days back when I met them for the first time that I'm so fascinated by colleges because I've never been to one. I don't know what it feels like sitting in a classroom, but that, that was a choice I made. I was old enough by then. I rarely got a chance to attend family functions, you know, weddings and birthdays. I hardly got a chance to sit with people during their moments of sorrow because I had a schedule to follow, a timeline to keep up to. Allow me to share with you a couple of principles that I follow. I am my favorite, ho. literally. Basically, what I am trying to say here is, believe in yourself. You are the hero of your story, and like the heroes of our films, you too 
can fix it all. I believe I can fix it all. I can do anything if I put my heart and my soul into it. We are all limitless. So explore your total, complete potential. It begins with you. Dreaming and living that dream, visualizing yourself as an achiever. But if you do not see yourself on that platform as a winner, as an achiever, you are never going to be able to do it. It is not the color of the balloon that makes it fly. It is what's inside it. I have a smile every morning when I wake up. I embrace the day because I know I'm going to make more music. I'm going to meet better people with greater knowledge and I'm going to be able to create a career out of it, a bigger career out of it than I already have. And you know what I do believe in? I believe in luck. You're alive. You're already lucky. Give this thought a big, tight hug and find it. Find what makes you alive. Find that one thing that you know you want to do the most. Okay, now, all of us eventually get married, right? You plan on getting married, right? Gosh, you're scaring me, but okay. So eventually, I know it sounds scary, but we do get married. Now, if we can pick out one person to spend our entire lives with, we can definitely pick out that one thing that we want to work on. When I was in the fourth grade, um, I scored a really bad one in my math test. Math was basically, is basically my weakest spot. And I came home with my result, I showed it to my dad and I started crying. And my dad told me that day, you don't do good with math because you don't have your heart in it. Like I did in music. So go on, find that thing that you can have your heart in. It's not that difficult. I understood that day that I loved music and I would do it forever. Everybody's moment comes at a different time in life. But you have to be open enough to embrace that moment. So go on, find that thing that you can have your heart in. It's not that difficult. I understood that day that I loved music and I would do it forever. Everybody's moment comes at a different time in life. But you have to be open enough to embrace that moment. I didn't know on that day that I would end up singing in like 22 languages, 10 genres, three entire octaves. I didn't set out for it. It happened because I fell in love with what I, what I was doing. Those who wish to sing always find a song. So go ahead. Find that thing. Once you find it, seize it. Persistence. This is something that I have done every single day of my life. The harder you work, the bigger the rewards you get. Practice, practice, practice. My journey so far has not been entirely planned. Through these years of hardship, I, as an individual, did music because I loved it. But again, I had to put in crazy amounts of hard work. Every morning, I would wake up at 5 a.m. and I would sing for two hours. I would do my riyas for two hours. Literally, no Sundays, no vacation breaks. Even if we would be traveling, we would be carrying a tanpura or a harmonium, which is, which is how I spent 15 years of my life. I practiced every day. Quite frankly, a lot of the time of that journey, there was no goal. It was because I was enjoying it. I had found that there is something that I can do better than what I can do else with anything else. So always have to remember that you are the hero of your story. You have to compete with yourself. There's nobody in the world who you have to prove yourself to. Also, your passion towards your job must be a madness. You know, every morning, 
as i said before you are the hero of your story and you have to compete with yourself so set your benchmark so high that every morning when you wake up you ask yourself this question am i doing enough even though you know that you probably are but if you don't wake up and ask yourself am i doing enough you're probably not even doing enough i do it i ask myself this question every morning i love hardships i love challenges they help me set myself free i find a new goal every day i didn't set out with all of these dreams really one thing led to another so don't try to escape your dream the roots the roots end before you even embark upon them let me share a recent experience of mine with you i was thinking about creating a version of a certain song and i started thinking about it 3 months before i actually got a chance to release that video so now if it can take 3 months to create a 6 minute or video then we are talking about your entire professional life patience is the key give time some time don't rush it that's one of the main things that i follow perfection it's not just the good days that you need your team for it's basically a bunch of those people who keep you grounded who keep you anchored when the storm is at its roughest you know the law of gravity it does not only apply to the earth it applies to life as well everything that goes up will come down how you realign your orbit when it comes down it all depends on who's your pillow so you know your core team the people you work with the people around you these people they walk with you like a shadow you don't realize it but they really do you may be the face but they do it all with you they are your backstage lineup so you struggle they struggle you soar they soar you jump they jump you fall they catch those are the people the the positive people that you must surround yourself with those positive energies can take you to places you probably have never imagined to reach for example the ted talk i didn't expect this to happen so soon in my life but it did and i genuinely owe it to all of those people who are the wind beneath my wings i don't know how i would function without them this schedules appointments this recordings rehearsals concerts travel details food sleep clothes money <laughs> investments human relations somebody's got to do it and i really don't think i alone would be able to do it each and every job is done so meticulously by my entire team which is you know um again spearheaded by my mom and the team of managers that i have today i i can so proudly talk to the world about them and they also remind you every day that you have a responsibility you have promises you have made to so many people and you must keep them and of course there's so many miles you have to go before you sleep so you need your team to back you up and you need to respect your team because without them you're literally probably going to be washed away in that storm uh i want to share with you one of my personal experiences so when i was in chote ustad i happened to be shooting a sequence with mr amitabh bachchan now we were to be dressed as men in black so you know the black glaze the white shirt the black tie and the entire black suit now as always the clothes that they brought in for me they were three sizes bigger than my size so i would basically look like a hanger so 
I was, I did my little bit of complaining. Why do you do this? You always take the wrong clothes. But did I have a choice? I didn't. So I put it on and they scrunched it and crumpled it and everything. And they just stacked me up in that suit. But what I could do is barely move. But anyway, I was on the set. When Mr. Bachchan entered the set, he walked towards me and he held out his hand. And he's like, hi, I'm Amitabh Bachchan. And I was, I was a little girl. I said, hi, I'm Aishwarya Majmudar. And you know the first thing he told me? Ye aapko meri shirt kisne pehna di? Funny, right? His observation. And what is greater is what he did next. He told me, Chalo, abhi isko theek kar dete He helped me take off my jacket. He removed those safety pins which were really badly placed. He properly fitted my shirt for me. He redid my tie. And he helped me put my suit back up. He did not call for a spot tie. He did not call for the clothes designer. He did not call for anybody. He did it himself. That day, I learned the biggest lesson of my life. That is humility at its peak. And that taught me that if I want to get anywhere in life, just anywhere, I will always remember this man and what experiences he has given to me. People forget what you did. People will forget how you did it. But what they won't forget is how you made them feel. I learned something that day. It is nice to feel important. It is nice to be important. But it is very important to be nice. I know, right? These are the two people I would like to thank my existence to. Uh, no, not really. How many of you can actually see this? Oh my God, Can anybody read that? Good, you're still with me. Next. Faith. What I'm trying to put across out here is faith. So basically, you know, we all know this big saying, man proposes, God disposes. Believe that like in our movies, end me sab acha yoga. You will have your days when you're shattered in pieces and just too broken to pick yourself up. You're tired. It happens. It happens to me too. And that is when you ask yourself this question, why me? I'm sure all of you people in this room, just like me, have once in your life asked this question. This is, you know, this is one of my favorite things to share with the world. There was this sports personality. And he was, you know, at the peak of its, his career. He was getting laurels from all over. He was making his country proud and he was shining away. And then, then he was diagnosed with cancer. And he asked a confidant, why me? And the reply in return was, when you won those awards, when the entire country was proud of you, when you were shining away like the sun, did you ask God? Why me? I have imbibed that in my life. If I couldn't ask that question, if I could enjoy that moment, I must learn to enjoy the weakest of the moments of my life. I think of this story each time I pass a bad phase. There's always going to be a tomorrow. And tomorrow is only a day away. Out of personal experience and whatever failures and victories I've had in life, I promise you, I will only wave the white flag 
on the final day of my life. Until then, I will wake up every morning with that big smile on my face and tell the world, bring it on. It's my submission to all of you people is it's okay not to have a plan. But it is not okay not to dream. Have that burning desire to do something, to achieve something. Get out there and just take the moment in your hands and make it happen. The story is not going to be the same. The challenges and struggles, everything is going to be the same. Your sacrifice is going to be the The one thing that won't change between you and me is a passion. Have that crazy, crazy passion to achieve what you want to achieve. This passion is what got me here today. And it's that passion that completes the chain of my emotions. I'm Aishwarya, and this is my chain reaction. Hope I know.